In today's video, we're talking about lens filters. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is gonna be all about filters and specifically we're gonna go into the uh, filter systems that are available. Uh, I won't cover all of them here, but I'm gonna show you two different systems because a lot of people are not aware that there are multiple systems available for your camera. I think most people are familiar with this type of filter, which is the round ones that you screw onto the front of the lens, but there are other systems available that may suit your needs a little bit better. So let's just quickly talk about the filters that I'm gonna show you today. I use four different types of filters, and I think the last one I bought might have been around about five, six years ago. So you don't need a massive collection of filters to see you through most scenarios. Okay, so the first filter that we have is the polarizer. A lot of people are already familiar with this one. This cuts down on reflective uh, light. So uh, if you're trying to shoot, say, uh, on a lake and you're getting uh, light reflected off top of the lake, uh, if you put this on, a lot of the times it will actually get rid of all of that light and you can see through to the bottom of, the, of, of a lake. The other time that I've used this is if I'm shooting from inside a car uh, on a bright day through the front windscreen, uh, what tends to happen is you get the reflection of the dashboard onto the glass. Putting this on pretty much gets rid of that. And how it works is that this screws onto the front of your lens and there's actually two elements in here. So you can fine tune the effect. Uh, once you screw it on, the front element, which is this side here, is actually loose. It remains loose all the time. And you turn the this ring here which spins the front element and, uh, and changes the effect to, to either make it stronger or not as strong. Okay, so the next one is the neutral density filter, uh, often referred to as an ND filter. And the, the job of the ND filter is really, it, it, there's only one job really, it's just to cut down the amount of light that comes in to the camera. So if you wanted to do say uh, a five or six second exposure during the day, a long exposure to show some of the movement, um, you would have to use one of these because you could close down your lens, say f22, but that's that's still not gonna be enough. It's too much light, so you need to control the light, and uh, that you do it with one of these. This is a fairly extreme one. This is a 10 stop one, but you can get different values. So that look, that's very, very dark, uh, and that lets in um, not much light at all, which is great for really bright days. The other reason you might wanna use one of these is if, again, during the daylight, uh, during daylight you're trying to shoot at somewhere, say f2.8, which is wide open on the lens, uh, because you want to get a blurry background, a nice bokeh, then you would have to use one of these, otherwise you would just overexpose uh, your shot. Okay, moving on to the variable ND or variable neutral density. And this is a neutral density filter, much like the one I just showed you, but it is variable. So again, like the polarizer, it has two elements, and by sp once you screw this onto your lens, by spinning, and I'm not sure whether you can see that, you can actually set how how dark it gets or just completely transparent. And these are typically used for video because when you're videoing um, uh, a scene and the light changes, it, it allows you to quickly just step it down to reduce the amount of light. But I have used these for photography. And like I said, you weren't really supposed to use them for photography when they first came out, but now this one here performs really well. And uh, so this is the other one that I use quite a lot as well. By the way, if you want information on any of these, um, it, again, they'll all be in the description as well. I'll put some links in there so you can, you can check it out for yourself. Okay, so this next set of filters I'm gonna show you use a different system, and by system I mean the way that they're mounted onto the lens. So the ones that we've seen uh, up till now are these ones here, and these just screw onto the front of the lens. Uh, but the ones that I'm gonna show you now, because the filters are square, we need to use a filter holder, and then the filter holder goes onto the front of the lens, and then the filter gets uh, put into these little, you, you just insert it into this little slot, and then this whole thing gets mounted to the front of the lens. Now this system does have some advantages over this system because you can put multiple filters in these holders. This one here is configured at the moment to take two, up to two uh, filters, uh, but I can extend this to actually uh, take up to three filters. 
so you can mix and match different types of filters where it's a little bit more difficult to do using this system without getting uh, a vignetting effect. So the other advantage that this system has over this one is that if you own multiple lenses and they have a different diameter, which is often the case, um, you're going to have to buy one of these for each one of your lenses, which can get really expensive. Now, there are adapter rings that you can put on these, uh, which are, they step it down to uh, smaller lenses. So this one here, for example, is a 77 uh, millimeter lens, the, the, the thread. And uh, if you were to mount this onto a 72 millimeter lens, um, uh, lens, you would need an adapter. It can be a little bit messy and quite hard to get on there, so it's not really that elegant. Whereas with this system, you can buy these rings that are just permanently mounted onto each one of your lens, and these are quite inexpensive. And how these work is that um, you would, uh, that screws onto the front of your lens. And the idea is to have this permanently on your lens because it doesn't really get in the way. And then to mount these filters you just clip it on and it's now in there as well and that is that that's meant to be loose by the way in case you put in a um uh, a polarizing filter which you need to spin and uh, but that's how easy it is to uh, put them on and then just to take them off again so and if you change the lens you just get one of these rings for each one of your lenses and you're sorted so the one that i've got in here is the nissi 100 millimeter nd filter and uh, 100 millimeters is just uh, it, 100 millimeters there and, and, and there as well. So it's a square. And this is big enough to cover all of the Canon lenses that I've got and or ever think that I might have. But you can get larger ones than these as well. So I think you can get 150 millimeter ones. So they're quite large. Uh, but for myself, uh, this fits all of my lenses. Uh, so it's really quite nice having one filter that I can use with everything that I have. And that's the beauty, I think, of this system that works really, really well for me. And it's probably my preferred uh, method for filters going forward. So this is the ND filter. And again, very similar to the one that I showed you before, just not as strong. I think that's a six stop one uh, compared to the 10 stop one. Um, and uh, yeah, so that is the ND filter by Nissi. And the last one I'm going to show you is the graduated neutral density filter. And that is a filter where it goes from dark to clear um, gradually. And so they happen in different strengths. And that is just uh, essentially uh, the distance where it starts going from dark to clear. This one here is a medium. So it happens over, say, about there. Uh, if you were to get a hard one, then that line is more pronounced. Uh, still very soft, though, but it's more pronounced. And then obviously you get a soft one where it happens over uh, a much larger area. But these are really useful for things such as landscape photography. So let's say you're trying to take a picture of some mountains and you've got a really bright sky. So the way that this would work is that you would place your filter onto your filter holder over here. Okay. And then you would mount this onto your camera. Okay. And then what it allows you to do is slide the filter up and down so that you place the darker part of the filter just on the sky so that it only affects the sky. And if the, let's say you, you, the mountain, you're just taking a, a part of the mountain at an angle, you could actually just spin it as well. So you get that different effect. And, that, and, the, and the cool thing about this system is that that line can be moved up and down. You can get graduated ND filters in that system, but obviously you cannot move that up and down. The line's gonna be wherever the line is, which is typically in the middle. So you just have to recompose your shot. So this one here gives you more flexibility because it allows you to maybe even just get the top bit of the photograph or even most of the photograph and leave in the bottom uh, unaffected. Now, although I prefer this system, um, there are some drawbacks we use in this. Uh, the first one is obviously I cannot put a lens hood on this while I'm using the system. Uh, there's no way to mount this. If you did need uh, a lens hood and you wanted to use this system, you would have to go with something like a Lee, a matte box, which are extremely rare to find, but I will put a link below because I know where you can get them. Um, I mean, if you want to read up about it, just uh, have a look in the description. Uh, there'll be a link in there. But for myself, I don't typically need the hood while I'm using this. 
so uh, it, it's not really a problem for me. Um, if you are going to be running around with your camera chasing, you know, kids or, or, or whatever, or just, you know, action photography, this is not the system for you because although this is fairly secure on the, on the camera, uh, it's not going to be as secure as having one of these screwed onto the front of the lens. Um, so this is more if for hand-holding gentle work or if you're on a tripod, then this is still, I think, the best system. Now, if you're using this system though, uh, you're not gonna have any problems with the lens hood. You're going to be able to screw this onto the lens and then uh, your lens hood is going to be uh, okay to fit over the top of that. Now, something to keep in mind is that you can actually use a mixture of these two systems like I've got here because the mounting ring for this system can actually mount onto the outside of an existing filter. So you can actually use these together. Um, it's not something that I do very often, but something to keep in mind. Okay, so let me conclude by giving you some advice, just in case you're thinking about buying some of the stuff that I've got here. Um, I would not skimp on any filters. When I first got started, um, I remember buying filters from eBay and Amazon that were cheap and they were just terrible. And I don't have any of those anymore. I ended up just throwing them away because they really are absolutely useless. So I would stick with good brand uh, filters. Hey guys, sorry for the interruption to the video. It's just that during the edit, I noticed that there was a file missing. And in that one particular file, I had a take where I was talking about something really important. And that is where you can save money when you're buying your filters. Now, what I would say is that if you are going to buy filters, I would get the absolute best that I can afford as far as the filters themselves. But with the filter holder, for example, for the square ones, I went middle of the range because I think it's ridiculous to spend hundreds of dollars on a holder that uh, doesn't really give you that much extra performance. I wouldn't go for a cheap one, but I would go sort of halfway. And that's what I did with my one. Uh, this one's from a company called Cirque, and I will link uh, in the description below if you're interested in, in having a look at this one. This one is, um, it, the filters are really secure when you put them in there and all the clips are made of metal, so they're not plastic. So I feel very confident when I use this one that it performs almost as good as some of the really, really expensive ones. So I wanted to uh, make sure that this made it into the video so that you didn't miss out on that very um, useful bit of information. So it's back to the regular video. Okay, so the other thing that you can save some money on are these mounting rings. These are the ones that you screw onto the front of the lens and then uh, the the uh, filter holder can actually uh, snap onto this. And uh, so that's that type of uh, ring. And then you've also got another one. I don't have one here, but it looks pretty much the same as this. And it's called a step down ring. And it allows you to, um, to uh, mount one of these filters onto a smaller lens so that you don't have to buy multiples of these. However, I, I have use that system, it's really not that elegant at all. Um, for If you are going to be using your filters with multiple lenses, I think that this system is much, much better. Um, these rings are very inexpensive if you get aftermarket ones. And I usually have, a, like I have a tub over here. So that if I get new lenses, I just go through it. And like I said, I've got loads and loads in here. So I just find the right size. It goes onto the lens and it just stays there. So that's a much more practical solution. Now I am going to be writing an article that's going to go into uh, much more detail on all these items that we've talked about here today. And that's going to be at ministryofphoto.com. That's a site that I launched not that long ago where you can find uh, videos, blog articles, and even some uh, free downloads that you can get in there. So make sure you go check that out. It's completely free. Now, if you've got any questions or you need me to explain anything further, just leave me a note in the comment section below. I like hearing from you guys and I promise to get back to you. So yeah, if you've got any comments or questions, make sure you leave them in there. Now, if I could just stop for a second and ask you for a favor, I'm trying to work out what kind of content you guys resonate with. And the best way for me to know that is the like or dislike button. So if you like this video, it would be great if you could just give it a thumbs up. That way it tells me that this is the kind of content that you like and I can make more of it. So that's it from me. And again, if you've got any questions uh, or you have any tips about any of the stuff that we talked about here today, make sure you leave me a note in the comment section below. It'd be great to hear from you. So again, that's everything I have for you today. I want to thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.